Hey, thanks so much. Here you go. Lost my coffee. Mm. All right, so we have a new microphone, so I'm just going to talk for a little bit randomly and not say anything super important for the first uh, about 47 seconds so they can get this thing set and check it and make sure everything's good. And sometimes I yell, so I'm going to yell sometimes. And sometimes I speak very quietly, so I'm very hard to set sound for, uh, but they do an amazing job back there. And once uh, you f- feel like you can hear me, go ahead and give me a thumbs up. And uh, if it doesn't sound weird or crazy or anything, if it's bad, just give me a thumbs down. Um, I can't help my voice. It's just the actual sound of it. We good? Awesome. Once again, hey, Joe. Good to see you, Nancy. Hello. Hey, I, I didn't get a chance to see you. I was sitting down and uh, uh, talking to my six-year-old. Uh, how many of you, if, if it's your first time here today, can you raise your hand and, and just wave at me really quick? So I can see you. I met you guys. I met you. I did not meet. You're not even a visitor. Uh, I'm going to meet you guys after. I want to meet, uh, meet you guys. I wanna, okay, very good. Great to have you here. Uh, we're just a group of people. Let me just tell you about who we are, what we're about. We're just a group of people who really love Jesus, and we believe in his word. We believe that our number one goal and priority on this planet is to connect with a loving and wonderful an amazing creator of the entire universe with Father God. Our job here is to love God, to know him and to love him. And then because we know him and we love him, in turn, that, that, that affects the way we live our lives. It affects the things that we do, affects the things that we say. And we believe here at Abundant Life that if it's in his word, it should be inside of us. So we see all of these amazing things throughout Scripture, and we believe that it's not just, it wasn't just for the apostles. The Holy Spirit wasn't just for the apostles. It was a promise for all mankind that Jesus paid a very high price for. So that we could step into the, this baptism in the Holy Spirit and walk in the fullness and the power of his love. And I've talked about this. We've been talking about the Holy Spirit. We've been talking about his goodness and his love and what he does for us and his purpose and the why of the Holy Spirit. Can I tell you, though, just as a reminder, what is the number one attribute? Attribute. We see all these gifts, and we see all these fruits, and we see all these things throughout Scripture, but the number one thing that happens when the Holy Spirit comes is you shall receive power. You shall receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. And we think of power in a lot of different ways, and, and, and we think of, when, we, when you think of power, you may have a worldly view of power. You may think, well, it's, it's my ability to impact another object or person. I, I have power. You can think of strength maybe when you think of power. You think of a lot of different things when you think of power. Now, I know we have kids in here today. All the kids in here, if you are in elementary school, this is Family Sunday today. We do this at the, on the fifth Sunday of every month, but last week we had a special guest. So this week we have the kids in their church that you don't care about that. But anyway, that's what happened. But if you're an elementary kid, do me a favor very quick. I need you to do something for me. Very important. Put your device or tablet away for just a second. That goes for you too, parents. Can you do me a favor? Can you stand up on your chair for just, a se- for just a second? All the kids, stand up on your chair. Sawyer, you are not a kid. Sit down. Hey, let's give these awesome kids a round of applause. Stand up. Stay standing. Yeah, do that thing. Yep, do that dance, whatever it is. All right, while you're standing on your chair, let me ask you a question. What is the most powerful thing you can think of? But listen, you can't say God, okay? Because that's the answer that Jenny would want you to say, and I don't want you to do that. What's the most powerful thing you can think of? Ready, set, just yell it. Jenny is the most powerful thing? Woo, Jenny. Happy birthday. Okay, okay, shh, 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 shh. Hold on a second. Who has an answer? Raise your hand. If you can think of a a super powerful thing. Super powerful thing. Okay, yell as loud as you can. What's your powerful thing? Jumping with, that's powerful. Yeah. What's a powerful thing? Energy. Well, that's powerful. You're right. Yes. Superheroes. You should see the last movie. They're not so powerful. Huh? 
Um, what? <laughs> I didn't spoil anything. Stop it. <laughs> Whatever this dance is, I can't do it. <laughs> Powerful. You, amen. Way to go. Powerful. Gee, I said you can't say God or Jesus. But that is the right answer. Good job. Powerful. What is it? You sacking a quarterback. I like it. Anybody else? Yes. Love. Ooh. I like it. What? What? Prayer. There you go. Sorry, I can't hear well up here. All right, in the back, what's the most powerful thing ever? What? Electricity. Yeah. Powerful. Chevy's. Ah. Emmett. A lion? Yeah, that is powerful. One more. You. Very good. All right, everybody sit down. Give these guys a big round of applause. Man, there's a lot of powerful stuff on this earth. And when we think of power, we think of so many different things. Everyone has their own interpretation of what that means. But there is a biblical representation of power that I want to talk to you about today. But to understand this power and to walk in this power, it's important to have a broader view. How many of you know that sometimes you're so close to a situation, you're so close to whether it's a, whether it's a negative circumstance or whether it's something you're really excited about, sometimes you're so close to it that you can't really see what it is. And let me give you an example of this. What I need, I need probably eight kids to come up here as fast as you can. We're, this is a little different Sunday because we have our kids with us. We're having object lessons. Run. Just don't even ask. Don't look at your mom. I said to come. You come. All right, stop. All right, now you, you're a strong kid. I need you to stand right down there. Everyone else just get in a big cluster of people over here. Okay, you right here. Okay. I need you to take this, this little end of this, and just go over there. Whoa, what was that? Oh, oh, not so hard. Not so fast. Okay, I need someone else. Uh, yes. Okay, you, go that way. Oh, wait, 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 wait. All right, a little bit further this way, a little bit further this way. Oh, no, we're not doing a tug of war. Don't worry. <laughs> you would lose. <laughs> I've seen her. No. Okay, I need all of you kids. Help me hold this rope up as high as you can above your head. Everyone, so spread out, 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 spread out. Oh, you're going to hold her. That, you are powerful. Oh, you can move, like spread out, like different direction. Like this girl, she's, remember that kitty that's just hanging on, hanging in there? Yeah, that's her right here. Scoot down. <laughs> go down that way. All right, tall people on one end. There you go. Spread out. Perfect. Okay. Hi, how are you? You are cute. All right, you, come over, go over there so that these kids are okay. Okay, you're good? Excuse me. I have to preach. Okay, so perspective, okay? Pretend that this rope represents all of time, okay? You are the beginning of time. Say, I'm the beginning of time. Very good. And you say, I am the end of time. Fear me. There you go. <laughs> You don't have to fear the end of the time. Here's the deal. We know about the beginning. We know about the beginning. We know that in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was God, and the Word was with God. And that, that darkness covered, or chaos covered the earth, and the Holy Spirit came, and he began to brood over everything that was going on there. And he said, let there be light, and there was light, and began the creation process, and what we know is time. That was the beginning of what we know is time. Now, there's before our time, and I don't know about that. That Word doesn't tell us about that. I don't speculate about that. But God was there before. And so that's the beginning of our time. That blue line, you say, I'm the beginning? I'm the beginning. Yes, you are. And all of you say, we're the middle. We're the middle. Very good. And then over here, we have the end of time. We know what happens at the end of time. God wins. His people are victorious. We live in eternity with him. I don't understand what all that looks like. Eternity in, in our minds doesn't really make a lot of sense. But there's all of this stuff in between, all of these beautiful things in between. There's stuff that happens. Back here, we have the Old Testament. We say, we're the Old Testament. Over here, we have the New Testament. Say, we're the New Testament. And we have eternity somewhere out 
thought that is extended all the way over there. But in this time, there's, there's things that happen. There's things that go on. Okay, buddy, I need you to go down over that way because i got to stand right here. Okay, so right here, right now, thank you for the electrical tape, by the way. Who gave me that? Vody? Thanks, buddy. Appreciate you. Everybody give it up for electricians. Yeah. Wow, they are not excited about electricians, bro. Yeah, go turn the lights on in your house and then get excited, all right? I'm not sure. This is good tape. I don't want to steal that from you, so. Oh, sorry. Let me throw that back to bed. Okay, right here, there is this little, little tiny thing. Everybody say, this is me. And in the light of the past and in light of eternity, we have this little bit of time here. And we have this tiny little opportunity to impact all of this and all of this and eternity. But what happens here lasts for all of eternity. What happens in this life, how you react, how you live your life, affects everything everything in the future. We learn from everything that's gone on over here. But we have to have this perspective of what's happening right now in the light of eternity is just a tiny little wisp. It's just a tiny little thing. Oftentimes we, we're walking through life. Okay, kids, thank you so much. You can go sit down. Drop the rope. Drop it. Drop it. Wonderful. Oh, you threw it. I need to. Yeah, give him a hand. We have all of this time, but we have this tiny little space right here. And the question that we have to ask ourselves, and the question we have to get to is, how do I do, what do I do with this little dash that God has given me? I've said it before, every, if you walk through a graveyard, everybody, on every gravestone, there's a time of beginning and there's a time of end, but there's a dash in between. And that dash can have an impact on everything from here until the end of eternity. That's called a legacy. You are leaving a legacy with the, with the actions that you live. Kids, you are leaving a legacy. When you, when you go and you say, I want to live my life for Jesus, it means I want to do something different. I want to do something that matters. I want to do something that's going to impact not only my life, but other people's life for the rest of eternity. Why? Because that's the power that Christ paid for, for us to live in. That's the power that Christ paid for so that we could live a life of power. That's what he paid for. So how do we do it? What does it look like? How do we affect eternity in the light of all of time? What can we do here? First, we find my notes. You know, it's very easy to come into a church service and get excited. It's very easy to come to one of our conferences and, and, and receive some great training and ministry from some, some wonderful people. It's really awesome to go to a Bible study and to grow and to learn and be discipled. But what really, I promise you, has an impact on the people around you is the way you live your life when you're not here. Because, listen... When everyone's lifting their hands, when everybody's excited about Jesus, when everyone has a good attitude, when, you know, the coffee is flowing, like, it's great. I mean, it's, it's, it, everything is good. It's easy. But when it's 8.30 on Sunday morning and your kids are screaming at each other and, and everybody's mad in the house and, 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 and you go to work on Monday morning and, and, and you know, that, that one person is coming towards your office and you're like, I know what's going to happen to Jesus. I need grace and love and mercy right now. When you get a call in the middle of the night and things aren't going well, when someone you love, that's the times when the deutimous power of the Holy Spirit is called to rise up within you and you're called to look and be different.
When we speak of the power of the Holy Spirit, many people, even Christians, misunderstand the meaning of this of the word power. They tend to define the, the word power as the world defines it. Because the, 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 Jesus said you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. It was the promise and the first fruit of when the Holy Spirit comes upon you. It's power. In the world's view, power conveys the ability to either control people or control events or circumstances, maybe for our own advantage. If I think of a, a, a powerful truck, say a Chevy, like my good friend was so wise in saying over here. Or anything that's powerful, it's because it can overtake or overcome whatever else we're comparing it to, right? Something is only powerful because it can, it's better than something else. Because there's this... Do you understand what I'm saying? There's... Something is powerful because something else has been overthrown by that power. And when we think of the world's view of power, it brings an independence and a, a self-sufficiency. Think of powerful people. They don't need anybody's help. I think of the power rangers. Oh, they don't need anybody's help. They got this. The power people, who do they, Corey, we talked about them this week by their powers combined? No. Captain Planet! Thank you. It's powerful individuals, and when their powers combine, they become this ultra-powerful thing that nobody can touch. Earth, wind, fire, planet. They're self-sufficient, and we think of our own power, we think of self-sufficiency, but in the kingdom of God, we can't see power, the same power that we're talking about, isn't the ability to overcome others, isn't the ability to overcome circumstances by our own might. What it is, it's, it's, it's because that world's power is temporary, leaving someone always wanting and always desiring more and always seeking more. While so many people on this earth desire this, this power to achieve the goal of this is who I am, this is what I've overcome, this is what I've accomplished in life. It can never satisfy and never bring completion to the ultimate call that God has placed upon your life. Why? Because you were never meant to be powerful in and of yourself. You were always meant to be human. Look at the person next to you and say, hey, you're human. Look at the other person on the other side of you and say, hey, you're superhuman. I don't know if that's a compliment or not. It's like a backdoor compliment. You are superhuman today. But it's in describing this word power that we talk about that is essential for a lifestyle that God has called us to leave, to make an impact for all of eternity, in describing, in describing this word, the Bible paints as such a, an incredible picture. The word translated power in, in places like Luke 24 and Acts 1 and 2 Corinthians chapter 12, the word translated as power in the English Bible is, the, is Greek. So it's, it's the word dynamis. Everybody say dynamis. But say it like you mean it. Say dynamis. Thank you. This is the word that which, which we get the word dynamite from. In Acts 1-8, Jesus told his disciples that before they were able to evangelize the world and do what they were called to do, they must receive the dynamis of the Holy Spirit. They had to receive the dynamis of the Holy Spirit. You see, the Holy Spirit possesses a dynamite-like power that works within a believer to blast out everything that is unlike God. The power of the Holy Spirit, listen to me very carefully, is not for you to affect the world around you, but it is first to affect you. Why? Because you can't affect the world around you unless you are first affected by what God is placing inside of you. Oftentimes we like, we want to do ministry, we're gung-ho, we want to go evangelize the world, we want to do this. Let me ask you this question, how are you doing with the dynamis power inside of you? Is it blasting out everything in you that God doesn't want there? I'm not saying that you have to be perfect to evangelize the world, to prophesy, to, to, to do whatever God has called you to do. I'm not saying you have to do that, but I'm saying you the first fruit of the Holy Spirit coming into someone is everything that God wants out goes. It's becoming weak so that he could become strong. It's what Paul was talking about. 
I must become less so that he become more. Why? Because the Holy Spirit in you has to, has to become who you are. It's this transformational power of the Holy Spirit that allows us to walk in signs and wonders and miracles. It's not by our own strength or not be for special people who are called to that. It's for everyone who allows the power of the Holy Spirit to come in them and to be more, to allow themselves to be more than they could ever be on their own. Now, this idea and this thought process is, is especially hard for men. Everybody say, all the men said, yep. Because as men, we like to fix things. We see a problem, we want it dealt with, and we're the ones to do it. We want to control things. We want to make sure everything's in order and everything's perfect. And uh, you know what? We have the strength in and of ourselves to get it done. And if we don't, we feel like, oh, we're a failure as a man. Because we're men. And it's what we do. We talk in low voices and grunt and things. <laughs> I don't know. I'm not. Uh, that's not me. <laughs> I don't know how to fix things. Let me tell you something, though, very, that it may be a key to unlocking the, the destiny that God has for you. There are some things in this life that you're not to called to do on your own. There are some things in, your li- in this life that men, women, I don't care who you are, kids, you're not called to fix. There are some things in this life that will be beyond your control. And it will cause you to do one of two things. It will cause you either, number one, to walk away from some of the things that God is calling to you, or number two, to submit those things to the Father and allow the miracle working power of the Holy Spirit to be evident in your life. Listen to me very carefully. A lot of people ask me, why, why aren't I seeing signs? Why aren't I doing this? Why, why isn't God coming, working on our behalf? How, how could God let this happen? We've all asked those questions. We've all heard people ask those questions. Can I tell you that every time that I've seen failure in my own life, it's because I got in the way? Because I felt like I should try to do this, or I should try to fix this, or I can do this by my strength, or I can do Listen to me very carefully. You were never called to walk this journey with God by your own strength. That's why in Isaiah it says, those who wait upon the Lord shall rise up with the wings like eagles. Listen, I want to rise up with wings like eagles. But I look really stupid here jumping off this stage and flapping my arms. You want to see? No. I'll bust my ACL or something, do something stupid. No, he'll protect me. We want to all rise up like wings like eagles. We want to run and not grow weary. We want to walk and not, be, not grow faint. We all want to do that. That's what we're all called to be. That's what we're called to do. But we always forget about the first part, those who wait upon the Lord. We don't want to wait. We want to run. And halfway on the journey, we're dying. We're like, God, I knew this journey was for me. And he said, you didn't wait. You tried to do this in your own strength and in your own power. And listen to me very carefully. In the light of eternity, from beginning to end, no one who ever did anything for God was ever called to do it by their own strength. They were given plans and strategies and strength, and they were given tools and abilities. Why? Because they understood that Christ in them was their hope of glory. The disciples who who were already doing the work that God had called them to do, they were already doing it. Jesus said, you can't do it anymore without the power of the Holy Spirit. Why? Because it's too big for you. I'm sure some of them were like, hey, we've already been doing it. We've cast out demons. We've done signs. We've done wonders. We're doing all of these things. But Jesus said, wait. Don't go. Don't go anywhere until you receive the promise of the power. Don't go anywhere until you receive the promise of the power. I would encourage every single one of you today, some of you know exactly what God has called you to do. Some of you have dreams. Some of you have things that you're not seeing fulfilled in your life, and you would love nothing more than to just to go out and make them happen. Can I tell you, I want those things for your life too, but I understand that the key to it is wait, and you will receive power. Wait. And you will receive the promise. And once the promise is poured out upon your life, then doors begin to open and things begin to happen. Listen, Peter and the disciples, they didn't do anything to make the doors open. 
They received power. Thousands got saved. And all they did was receive the power. And they stood there and they just walked in the power. They didn't do anything special. They didn't have a plan. They received power and they lived their lives. In Acts 1 8, Jesus told his disciples before they would go anywhere to evangelize the world, they must receive this dynamous power of the Holy Spirit. See, it is not a power that exalts one person above others, it does not manipulate or control others. Instead, the Holy Spirit uses his power to break us free so that he can remake us into what he's called us to be. The Holy Spirit gives us power to do what? To be witnesses said, you will receive power when the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be my witnesses. What does a witness do? Has anyone ever been on jury duty or been a witness somewhere? You've been on jury duty? Don't roll your eyes. It was your your (laughs) sacrifice to the government that you hold dear. What does a witness do? Testifies to what? What they've seen, to what they've heard. Listen, oftentimes we make our call from God so complicated, but it's not. You receive, you wait, you receive power, and then you testify to what you've seen or heard. That's it. That's it. Jesus says, go to Mexico. You go to Mexico, and what do you do there? You testify. You love people. You say, this is who Jesus is to me. Let me show you that. I can testify with, with, what I, with, with what I'm doing, with my actions, with my choices. I testify to his goodness and his love. It's not, it's not rocket science to live a life for God, but it does require a few things. It requires the waiting. It requires the power. And it requires a witness. All you kids in here say, Waiting. Good, three of you were listening. I, that was more than I expected, I'm perfectly honest. Just wanted to engage. Power and witness. If you can figure out those three things, then I promise you when you're on this earth, when you have this short little time, the impact that you have will leave a legacy for generations to come. If you can learn how to live your life according to the Spirit, the generations to come will be speaking of the things that God has done in your life. The power of the Holy Spirit is the only power that is sufficient enough to win the spiritual battles against our own selfish desires, against everything that's attacking us, against outside sources that would look to destroy you. The the power of the Holy Spirit within you is the only thing that will press you through into what God has called you to. You can't make it happen on your own. The question becomes, what kind of life are you living? Do you live in the power of your own strength or do you live in the power that Jesus promised when he said, wait, and you're going to receive power of the Holy Spirit? What kind of life, what kind of life do you want to live? When, you, when, when your little piece of tape on this earth is over and they're putting you in the ground, what do you want people to say? Because the way that you make that happen is, is, is with what you do today. I tell kids all the time, I tell people all the time, listen, your destiny isn't something you achieve, it's what you do today. You're never going to achieve your destiny on this earth. Your destiny is to be with the Father in heaven for eternity, but what you do today determines that. How many people go with you is determined by what you do today. And I want to challenge you. I really do. I I want you to be challenged today in the simplicity of what this looks like. Because what he promised, he already paid for, that we may receive the free gift that is the Holy Spirit. When the Holy Spirit comes, he releases his power. How many of you want to walk in this power of the Holy Spirit? It's going to take you getting out of the way and learning to hear him, learning to walk with him, learning to grow with him, learning to repent when you fail him. And learning to get back up and keep walking and keep running and keep going after it. 
There's no levels of His Spirit being poured out. It's his Holy Spirit will be poured out in power. All it is is a matter of how much are you willing to walk in. Period. It's not, it's not difficult. It's not complex. There's not like this big complex theological discussion that we need to have about it. It's will you do it or will you not do it? It's up to you because the free gift is there. What will you do with it? What will you do with it? Will you change the world? Because you can. Will you start with your family? Because that's where it begins. Will you allow the Holy Spirit to work inside of you and to get rid of everything else that he, that he doesn't want there so that you can be the witness that he's called you to be? You say, well, I, JJ, that all sounds really good, but where do I start? It's very easy. One thing I tell, I, I tell my kids, actually, is you get to control you. If you can learn how to control you, you're doing a really good job. If I do a good job of controlling me in one day, man, I'm a success. Forget everybody else. I can't, if I can fix me today, if I can do better with me today, that's where I began. That's the beginning of a legacy is right here. People say, oh, I want revival. I want all these things. Okay, start with you. I want to see prayer released into our, in, into our church. I want to see signs, wonders, and miracles. Perfect. Start with you. And then from you, you go to the next step, which is your family. And then when you have an empowered family and they're going out, they bring in friends and they bring in other people who become part of your family. And all of a sudden, it's called the congregation. It's called the church. And when this church can connect with another church is doing an amazing work of God, and when we can all walk together and see a community saved and see revival in a community, that's called revival. And revival, there is nothing that can contain the power of God working through people empowered by the Holy Spirit. Nothing. Where does it start? You. What will you do? What will you do? I think something is very funny. Shh. Hey. I'm trying to preach about family here. I'm just kidding, baby. I love you. Uh, I was, it was a joke. She doesn't understand jokes yet. At least not mine. She does. It starts with you. The power of the Holy Spirit is a free gift. If you don't you've never walked in the power of the baptism of the Holy Spirit, please, please find someone, find something. Get, in, get alone by yourself. Open the word. Read Acts chapter 1 and say, God, this same power, can you come? Can that dwell inside of me? In the, in the church, in the early church and, and all throughout Acts, they said when they found those people who didn't know about the Holy Spirit, they laid their hands upon them and they received the power of the Holy Spirit and there was always evidence. There was always some sort of evidence. The number one thing is power. Find someone who, who you trust and that you know. It could be a pastor at this church. It could be a friend that you came with today. Say, hey, can you pray for me? Can we do this? Parents. Get your families together and do an inventory on the power that you're walking in. If anger and chaos and frustration rule your house, then you're not walking in the power of the Holy Spirit. But that's not a, a knock on you. That's just an invitation to walk in a greater level of love, in a greater level of life, because it's His free gift. You gather your family around you and you say, listen, we're going after this thing. And I promise you, things will change. Promise. Why? Because that's his word. And he doesn't lie. Can I pray for you today? I know it's family Sunday and we got, there's all kinds of things going on. We're about to have a meal together. But I want to pray for you. I want to pray for a hunger to rise up with you, to walk in a level of power that you've never walked in before. 
I want to pray that if you've never experienced the power of the Holy Spirit in your life, that you would walk, that you would receive the power that He has promised you and that He's already paid for. I want you as parents and as family members, grandparents, to have the courage and the ability to gather your family and say, listen, this is what we're doing and this is how we're going to live. Because that's what will change the world. One person, empowered by the Spirit. Father God, I thank you for this congregation. I thank you for this group of individuals. Father, collectively, that you've called us to walk as a church, together as a family, impacting this city, impacting this region. Father, I thank you that you've given us the blueprint, that we're to wait, that we're to be empowered, and that we're to be a witness. Father, teach us how to do these things well. Teach us how to daily just rise up and walk and do these things well. Father, I just break off the complexity right now that we think of when we think of God, the gospel. I just break off the complexity. Father, show us the simplicity that this is not hard. All it is is just knowing you, loving you, and walking in your power that you've already paid for. Father, I love you so much. I pray for families in this congregation to come together in unity and to walk in this power that you promised. Father God, I love you and I praise you. In your son's precious and holy name I pray. And all God's people said, amen. This is what we're going to do today. We're, you're welcome to stay like, Jen, like uh, Laura talked about today. Um, we're going to have a meal together. If you'd like to stay, please do. If you didn't come prepared, um, Hy-Vee's right there, KFC's that way, Pizza Hut's right over there. Uh, Little Caesars is cheaper and I actually like it better. Um, it, oh, it's close. Never mind the remodeling. Uh, we're going to eat together. We love you guys very much. God bless you today as you go.